All hail the mighty lamp, Tabitha says. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to more Stephen Plays the Sims. Tabitha is obsessed with the lamp. Tabitha has always been obsessed with the lamp ever since she moved to Sunset Valley. But today, the lamp is talking to her. And this comes from Sensual Toast. Tabitha's insanity takes a turn for the worst when she hears the lamp speak to her. He says he is, a, he is pleased with her offering of Blair's father, but needs another sacrifice to keep order for all that is light and lamp-like. Wanting to please this lamp god, Tabitha agrees to kill another person for the lamp. She takes this opportunity to invite Blair over and lock her inside of the holy shrine. So she dies, all in the name of the lamp. All hail the mighty lamp. So there was actually a lot of interesting comments um, that wanted to utilize this space and wanted to incorporate the lamp. So I decided that that's exactly what we're going to do. And this actually works a lot with uh, what you guys wrote, too. Even Vincent Yu said, throw a lamp party, invite a lot of people, and if possible, bring them into the chapel. Um, Almighty Donut 13 says, Tabitha decides the lamp is um, too great to be only worshipped by her, so she traps everybody she can find down in the cellar with the lamp in an attempt to force them to accept that the lamp is divine many people die. So there is a lot of people that uh, that want Tabitha to communicate with the lamp, Tabitha to be getting ideas from the lamp, so that's what's happening. And the lamp tells Tabitha that people must die. So she decides that Blair must die, but unbeknownst to her, in the background is Guinevere. And Guinevere is sitting here watching this insane woman talk to the lamp. And she communicates with uh, with Tabitha, and she lets Tabitha know <laughs> she is arguing with the lamp um, that uh, if she is going to be doing anything to kill off someone, she wants Justine dead. She's wanted Justine dead for a while now. Guinevere has become obsessed with Marty. She wants to be with Marty, and uh, she sees that the only way that that's going to be able to happen is if she takes out Justine. So, she, she lets uh, Tabitha know that she wants in on whatever this plan is. And Tabitha says, don't worry, I will take care of the rest. So Tabitha, having thought about llamas and talked to the lamp, decides that she needs to go play with toys because she is insane. Seriously. <laughs> Gregory has now outgrown the toys, and Tabitha is going to be working with the toys now. I, I actually think that Tabitha is going to get more use out of this room than, than Gregory will now. In fact... I, I, d I did see her playing with, I think, the xylophone or something over here earlier. Um, or maybe she was just, she got toys out or something. Yeah! Look at that! You got the little abominable snowman, huh? Yeah, that's not even a race car. There is, there is clearly something, something wrong with you. Do you can you, you want to play with this one? You want to play with this one? You want to put that toy down and play with the sheep? Huh? Could I, I gotta help you along? Okay. Let me just... Let me stand up, but then immediately squat back down. It would have been easy to just turn, but that's too difficult. Yeah, Super Sheep! Someone's a fan of uh, the Worm series. Alright, you just, uh, you keep doing your thing there, Tabitha. Uh, well, let's check in on our, uh, on our other buddies. Oh, it's pretty late. It's, uh, it's 7.36. Tabitha's decided that the plane is going to go down tomorrow, so, um, this is, uh, kind of like the last evening that we're going to see, uh, everything happen. Now, um... Even though they have this nice house, Jerry, Jerry is such a great guy, and, and he's been doing his best to, to bring the schnobs back up in life because he had a great time with Franklin in college, even though Franklin does not remember him whatsoever. Uh, so he's been spending all of, all of his, uh, I would say hard-earned, but he got it in, ins <laughs> in an insurance fire, uh, all of his hard-earned cash uh, helping the house, trying to, to help these people, but it's hard to help people who um, have so many problems like they have. So I got a lot of comments about this. So this is just one, but there's a lot of people that wanted to see something like this. Orphelius wrote, uh, Franklin is mad about the events that have happened. And well, just mad about things in general because he's awful. He decides to end uh, life in the neighborhood by inviting people to a pool party. And... Uh, <laughs> bringing people into the pool, trying to lure them into the pool, and drowning them. So uh, that's wh that's what's uh, that's what's on Franklin's mind. I just want to uh, show you guys this because this is astounding. I did not make him read this. I did not choose this. He is reading. How do we find it? How do we see murder in Pleasant View? That is what he's reading. I did not do that. That's something that he did of his own accord, which is uh, astounding. Also, his hygiene is piss poor, which is really weird because they have plenty of places that they could take a shower. But, uh, 
for whatever reason, he decided, no, I'm not really into that, so he hasn't been doing that. Um, and the uh, the other comment I want to read is by uh, Funami2006. Because his time as a child with the snobs was traumatized, has traumatized him to the point where he wants to uh, be as far away from them as possible, as soon as possible, um, talking about Gregory. So, like, what was that for? Jesus! Need a shower? There we go. He's like, yeah, I smell like crap. Maybe I should... Maybe I should get a shower. So we've set the scene here. Franklin is still awful. Tabitha has now lost her mind and uh, is planning to sacrifice people for the lamp. Jerry is still trying to help these guys out, but he realizes that it's, uh, you know, it's quite an uphill battle at this point. I mean, it is, it is not very easy to do. Um, Guinevere, you know... Even though she started out okay, to be honest, she is also a terrible person because she is... She's really getting into it, isn't she? Oomch! Oomch! Yeah, yeah! Like, there's no one else here party. Gregory is... Gregory's kind of having a good time, though. So Guinevere is also a pretty terrible person because she's trying to actually end the life of uh, Justine so she can get with Marty, who also has a kid. So it's it's so many facets of, of disturbing. And the only real normal person here is Gregory who, of his own accord, just walked over and decided to paint. This is... I mean, we, we, got a, we got a winner here. I don't know how this happened. We just managed to get a, uh, a, good, a good kid. He seems really happy about those scribbles, but he's about to be argued with. And it also seems like he has a cold. So, it looks like... Uh, looks like your dad's coming over to give you hell. And he seems he's... Oh, oh poor guy. <laughs> a little closer comfort there, Dad. You're a failure. You'll never go anywhere. What are you gonna do? Eat the paintings? <laughs> Why don't you leave me? You leave me alone. And also, <laughs> Mom is crazy. You know what I, what I said? Reach through the stars. That's bullcrap. You gotta get yourself a real job. This is my job, Dad. I wanna, I wanna be creative. I wanna paint. This is what you're doing. You're always telling me I'm not gonna listen to you. You, you're just like, you're just like that guy on the TV. What, what guy? I gotta go to bed. Freak out. Having a bit of a moment. Going to bed until fully rested. So, how you doing, buddy? He is a neurotic, um, but he's also virtuoso, artistic, and ambitious. So he has issues from time to time. But considering the family that uh, that he's living with. It is a wonder that uh, he turned out as normal as he did. I know he was adopted, but still, nature versus nurture. There's a lot of terrible things going on in this household, so... Everyone seems to be asleep. Actually, someone's not asleep. What the... What are you doing? Are you going down into the shrine just to sit? Oh my god. Once again, this is fascinating because, yeah, you, the the Sims have a level of free will, but there's so many other things that Tabitha could be doing. So the fact that she has, of her own accord, decided to sit in the presence of the Almighty Lamp, that's awesome. I don't know, that's just really, really cool. And she decided, I need to scoot over, this is a better view. This is, this is legitimately frightening. Like, the fact that she decided to do this on, of, on her own. I mean, yeah, we're putting a story behind this ourselves, but that is... Messed up. Also, now she's got to go check out this this piece of art. Remember at the beginning, whenever she was uh, she was obsessed with the like the little bird cage thing. Like she just continued to look at that. Like she's she needs sleep, and instead she's like, I need to look at all the artwork. And she's also thinking of the fact that she would love to see Franklin dead because she's thinking of her uh, her ultimate goal. All right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, speed time up, get through this night, and uh, move on to planning the uh, the ultimate sacrifice for the lamp. All hail the mighty lamp. I just wanted to point out again how awesome Gregory is. His current wish is to become best friends with Tabitha. That's a, like that's just a really astounding to me. Like, God, he's a good ki good kid. Anyway, uh, Gregory has went off to school. Um, Franklin has went off to work. We are left with Tabitha, Jerry, and Guinevere. Um, Jerry and Guinevere. Uh, pretty good friends, hitting it off, having a good time, although they're... I want to say Guinevere is a good person. She's really not really not that great of a person, but Jerry is a pretty good dude, and it makes sense that he's trying to uh, to be good to people. Tabitha's getting her game on, or something, playing s some sort of d d burnout. Or I have no idea. Uh, but she's got to start uh, planning for this party, so she needs to... 
She needs to uh, throw a party, which is not services. I must have missed it. Uh, throw party. Now get out that phone. It's time for a party. We had a party last episode, actually, but the party was a birthday party. This is going to be a different kind of party. Okay, let's see. I need to stand at this end of the bed to make a call. Gotta get that reception. Ah, <laughs> uh, you are sick and twisted. House party. Party type funeral. Wow. A funeral. W what? What? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. That's a little weird because I don't understand why that's on here. A feud? Who is the funeral for? That's a mi like I don't even know how this what whatever the the it's gonna be it's gonna be a funeral that's at uh, that's at six six p.m. dress code is gonna be formal and uh, she is calling up the people that she wants to die so first and foremost Blair she wants she wants to make the uh, primary sacrifice to the Almighty Lamp Blair but also per Guinevere's request she invites uh, Justine. So Justine is invited as well. Um, she invites Marty, because she's just calling up the family, you know. Um, other people. She never really liked uh, Cyclone Sword, so she calls him up. Uh, who else? Let's see. Simus Bachelor. I think that's her husband's co-worker. Um, and uh, Emma Hatch was a part of the Blair household. Maybe she answered the phone and decided she'd come, up as, come over as well. Cornelia Goth, who knows who that actually is. This is a guy that uh, didn't give Guinevere a chance. Guinevere's pissed, so she invites him as well. I think, I, is that all the amount of people we can have? Oh, no, we could invite a few more. And uh, for good measure, Styles McGraw. That is the maximum number of guests we can have. So she lets him know that there's going to be a funeral at 6 p.m. What they don't know is that it's their funeral. Also, who's she... Is she in love with someone? What your sign looks like you and I were meant to be. Okay, wealth and riches. It's all that matters to me. Call me any time. We have so much coming. I'd love to get to know you, but... <laughs> Who are all these people? <laughs> like, where are you? Who are you talking? Like, what? I have no idea. It's so confusing. All right, so apparently there's going to be a funeral. Um, once again, I don't actually know how this works. I'm conf I've never seen the option for funeral. Um, hey, Jerry. Someone you could talk to. Might wanna, you might want to go go catch her before she gets out of there, man. Hey, nice to meet you. Hi, you're pretty old. <laughs> I am old, but I don't I don't act like it. We're <laughs> we're having this really sweet party later on. I hear you should you should come over. Oh my God, be argued with. Oh, that's not the way Jerry rolls, man. Jerry's trying to be friendly. He's trying to be enthusiastic about the outdoors, and you're just trying to insult him. Uh, you don't need that in your life, anyway. Um, so. I'm a, I'm assuming, I'm assuming here that maybe in their inventory. No, where's it? does someone have like the gravestone or something? I'm really <laughs> because don't forget Gregory's old homework. Gregory's homework 100 percent complete. Uh, don't forget that uh, Blair's dad died here, so I'm kind of thinking that you know maybe you know Blair's dad died and somewhere the the thing is here the um. What you call it? The gravestone? But we got rid of it, because we actually bulldozed the lot, so the the thing is not here. What the heck is that thing? Actually, what is that? Collect that. Go get that. What is that thing? I don't know what that is. What is it? An emerald. Oh, that's interesting. You've made $23 when we have hundreds of thousands of dollars, so it's really completely irrelevant. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be bringing everyone into uh, into this area. Now, we're having a funeral, so I don't really know how that's going to affect stuff, but I know that one way to easily bring everyone into a single area is by uh, is by having a birthday cake. And I don't know <laughs> if that's... I mean, first off, that's completely inappropriate for a funeral, but this is Tabitha we're talking about, so I assume that that's all right. Uh, let's see. Lighting, entertainment, parties. Uh, buffet table. Birthday cake. Does this always have to be used for birthday? Okay, let's throw a birthday party with this cake transition next age category at any time. Alright, let's, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Why the heck not? I'm gonna put this thing over here. 
And I'm going to put a birthday cake on it. I have no idea how, what, how this is even going to work. I really don't. I don't know if this is even a wise thing to do. Um, I'm going to put a party balloon down here. <laughs> Seems good. Uh, this is terribly confusing. I have no idea what's going to happen. I really don't. This is this is a little much for me, and I don't understand what's how exactly everything's going to play out. But uh, I'm interested to see what happens. So the party is at 6. We're going to fast forward time. And, uh, <laughs> what the heck? How do you have the funeral if, like, no one's dying? You know what I mean? Like, what? This is, ah, it's so weird. Oh, man, Jerry just got a phone call. It says, Holly Alto wants to know if Jerry Gunther would like to go on a date. Well, yeah, man. Stop. Yeah, that sounds great. Why don't you do that? Is, are you, are you going on a date now? Also, what? <laughs> what are you doing to poor Franklin? I, mean, I shouldn't say poor Franklin. Franklin's got... Franklin's uh, a terrible person in and of itself. But what? what when are, are you going on a date now? Is is that happening this second? Are you just trying to? You're going on a date now. You are going. Interesting. So you just got a random call. Also, that was a car wreck. Uh, and now he's going on a date. Snap. Wow. Good job, buddy. Have have yourself some fun. Where is she? I. Where are you going? Just kind of chilling there. Chat, are you even friends with this person? Like, what the... Who is this? You really don't know her all that well, but it's cool that uh, that you're going on going on a date. Awesome. All right, buddy, well, you have fun. And uh, and do your thing. Hopefully things work out well. All right. Meanwhile, at the house, uh, guests are starting to arrive because it's uh, nearly 6 o'clock. So uh, everyone's here in their formal attire. And uh, you know what that means. Tabitha is going to... Uh, <laughs> Everyone wants to get to know Franklin. Tabitha is going to come down here and invite everyone down for cake. And I'm not exactly sure how she can do that, but then I know that it's possible. So she's going to come down here. Even though she she wants to eat. No, honey. No, no. As we're not... No. <laughs> there's... there's Blowout candles. I'm not really sure how that works whenever you're already really old, but... Uh, I guess she can do it, right? Oh no, it won't. It won't actually. Uh, it won't actually let her because she is old, so she can't actually do that. But once you're down here, I'm pretty sure you can invite uh, everyone down here if you just. Uh, I might have to pause time. If you just tell everyone, there's a way to do it. There's a way to be like, hey everybody, get on down here. Call over. Call everyone down here, or just <laughs> actually <laughs> make someone else. <laughs> It's a, it's a funeral where you have a birthday party for someone else. Um, Blair Wainwright is having a birthday party. Come on. <laughs> I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> Sorry. I'm imagining the fact that Tabitha called everyone and said, we're having a funeral. And whenever everyone gets here, Blair... <laughs> has a birthday cake waiting. She's like, it's a funeral, but also everyone is here for this birthday party. Uh, all right, so Blair is no longer interested in keeping things romantic, presumably with uh, with Franklin. So people are upstairs dancing. This is a weird, weird party. People are playing video games, um, and they're all here for a funeral of some sort. And uh, Blair is down here ready to um, to blow out the candles. So, Franklin wants to go to a birthday party. Um, everyone's coming down here for the birthday party, except Jerry, who is not here. Uh, Gregory's doing his homework. So now that, uh, now that Justine is here, and off the ladder, that is whenever Tabitha springs into action, and she decides to remove the ladder. So the ladder is removed. Now here's the thing, and this is what's so fun to me, and this is, uh, this is, uh, canonical. Tabitha is the one that was taking care of Operation Funeral. Guinevere said that she wanted to go along with it, no matter what! She wanted to make sure that she took care of Justine. What she did not realize was that the plan was to bring everyone down into the basement and trap them here. Guinevere was not planning on being trapped herself, but now Guinevere is down here as well. So she's stuck. She is. She would, did not want to be a part of this plan. This was not in her in her thinking. She was like, "Okay, well, this isn't the way it's going to end. This is this is uh, this is not the way I wanted this to happen." 
She thought that they were going to be able to take care of Justine without putting her own life in jeopardy, but now the ladder is gone. And the hole is gone. There is no way to the surface. They are stuck. Tabitha is so pleased with herself because she is pleasing the mighty lamp. But uh, it is at the cost of, um, of many, many lives. And uh, unfortunately for Guinevere, at her own. Tabitha finally bit the bullet. She couldn't take it anymore. Everyone smells like crap because they've been trapped down here for, I believe, two, two or three days now. The Grim Reaper has finally come. It's funny. Tabitha's sacrifice was ultimately herself. Now she has been taken. Every, everyone is like, uh, this seems bad. Tabitha's reborn as a ghost. They've pretty much just been peeing and cleaning it up for a few days. They've all been, uh, very much stuck down here. And, uh, to be honest, it doesn't look like Guinevere has, uh, has much longer to go either. There it is. Guinevere also has met the Reaper. Well, she's about to. In a second, the Reapers. Is the Reaper even still here? He's like, oh, I was, I was up there partying. There was, there was some really sweet music going on. Well, welcome to the afterlife. Will anyone uh, plead on her behalf? No. Okay. All right. Well, I'm out of here then. All of Guinevere Vittori's belongings have been moved to Franklin Schnob's inventory. And he's like, man, why am I even, why am I even down here? I don't even know how to leave. The third casualty. It's Justine. It's what Guinevere wanted. Unfortunately, Guinevere isn't around to celebrate. Her own terrible desires did her in. And now there's no <laughs> there's no reason for a Justine to have even been killed in the first place. But unbeknownst to these folks, Gregory heard a noise from above the ground and decided that maybe he should dig. So Gregory puts a ladder back, which allows all of the Sims freedom. So, let's see if they use this to get out of there as fast as they can. All of them are near death. They all of... Th <laughs> they're like running to get up that ladder as fast as they can. They're like, we have got to get the crap out of here. Because honestly, they really are all... <laughs> they're like, oh my god, this hellhole! Jesus Christ, get me out of here! They're going, they're going. Oh man. Oh, Blair fell! Blair's asleep. Are they going to be able to get out of here? And they're going. They got calls out. And Gregory says, what the crap is down here? Gregory has never been down here before. He has never seen the uh, the uh, the mighty lamp. And uh, does Franklin Schnapps want to talk? <laughs> no, he's a little busy. Um... Look, he's so excited that he, that he made a ladder to free everyone. It's a shame that a few people died. He'll never be able to become best friends with Tabitha. And now, Franklin's down here. Franklin's one thought? Better mop up that puddle. So it's been a few hours after the event. Um, everyone is handling it a little differently. Jerry's having a drink. Uh, Gregory's been sobbing like crazy. And Franklin... Eh, he took a crap. Sometime after the event, Jerry and Gregory decide to have a little chat, and the chat is about Franklin. Tabitha Schnobbs just died. Isn't it a shame? An absolute shame, and they're still mourning Guinevere. And they have a really hard time with her passing. But one thing they can both agree on, and I gotta show you guys this. <laughs> they agree that Franklin is a terrible person. Look at this. This is Jerry's relationship with Franklin. It is d abysmal. His relationship with Gregory is quite good. They're, they they have grown to love each other. And even though Franklin, uh, Franklin's own son is the one that he is worst relationship with. Um, Gregory. Gregory's good friends with, with Jerry, but does not like Franklin. And I think Franklin also doesn't like 
Um, yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't like Jerry either. So there's a lot of tension in the household. So they come up with a plan. Franklin takes nightly swims. So when he takes his nightly swim, tonight they strike. And what's funny is that if you look at his symbology, uh, Franklin's not going to live much longer. Franklin has probably less than a day to live anyway. He's 90 years old. But they don't care. They are, they're going to do him in once and for all. And they are going to get rid of the terrible things that happened in this household. The terrible things that Gregory had to go through. It's finally going to be over. Gonna take my nightly swim, my nightly swim, dooba dooba doo boo boo. Gonna take my nightly swim, except for the fact you're screwed. Build time. So Gregory and Jerry got real comfy cozy, and spent the rest of the evening turning the tables on Franklin, who had made the entire family's life a living hell. Rest in peace, Franklin. Rest in peace. <laughs>